Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's looking at a Mercedes C220 diesel. Okay, if we get in this vehicle and start it up. It's got a DPF issue, so if we look at the stats here for the DPF, it's got a fill level of 400%, soot content of 25 grams, and we have differential pressure of apparently 710 within the DPF, that's with the vehicle idling. Now if we accelerate it up, all the way, it doesn't move. So that points to an issue with the DPF pressure sensor there. Okay, here's some of the fault codes that we have. P24514, P24532, Ace. P246309, so the soot content and a differential pressure sensor has a short circuit. Okay, we've got a pressure sensor here that I'm going to fit to the car and possibly clean the DPF as well. So we're going to get the engine cover off. Now, on top of the airbox here, we've got a couple of E sockets. I'm going to use an E10 to screw these off. So now we've got the four bolts out, we can get our fingers around the back and release these little tabs right here. So you get your fingers around the back and you can pull them off all four. And then this one should slide towards you and you can pull it off. Tuck that out of the way. I'm gonna remove the inlet pipe. So we'll grab it from here, pull it upwards, get that out. Remove the plug from the air mass meter. Use the 7mm to open the clamp to the air filter. Pull that off and then pull this upwards. Tuck that rubber hose to the side. Since you've got it up, we're going to pull it forward. Okay, down the back here we have the DPF pressure sensor. So we're going to remove this bracket with uh, some bolts over here. Okay, now those three bolts there are removed, we can just pull this forward a little bit. It gives us a bit more access to the sensor back here. We've got two tubes that go before the DPF and after. So when you pull out this grey tab, and then you can squeeze the two tabs at each side, get the plug off of the sensor there. Just tuck that out of the way. And then there's just another E10 bolt here to release the sensor. And then you've got two hose clamps. Use a set of these hose pliers. You can release those clamps. I'll just put the bolt back on there to hold it steady. Okay, I've got the sensor out. So you've got, you can see there one tube is slightly larger diameter than the other. So that one is before the DPF and this one is after the DPF. So you can see there, that matches up with those. So if you use a multimeter, hook it up to an earth point and then just confirm that you have power. So if we use the jump point here from the car, just confirm that you're getting 12 volts. And then come across to the pins on your plug, make sure you're getting 5 volts there. Now if I connect my negative of the meter here to the positive, check your middle pin, make sure you're getting an earth on that, so it's minus 12 volts. Okay, now we've got a new sensor fitted on here. And if we back probe into the signal wire, we should get a voltage reading from that as well, very low voltage. Okay, now we've got the new sensor connected. Read the live data again, see what that sensor is giving us. So now we've got 20 millibars of pressure at idle, so still a bit high. Now we're going to clean the DPF. We're going to hold the revs at 3000 RPM. Okay, so at 3000 RPM we have 150 millibars. So what we're looking at on here for idle, we should have zero on this car because it only reads under 10 increments. So we should be reading a zero at idle and around about 40 or 50 millibars at 3000 RPM. So we'll get it cleaned out. So what we're going to do now is remove this new sensor that we fitted. 
Okay, so I've got a compressor set at 130 psi. That is connected to this DPF cleaning gun from Launch UK. And inside the gun is the DPF cleaning fluid again from Launch UK. So I'm going to connect this now, end of the holes here, into the larger diameter holes to the DPF. Push that in nice and tight. Then we can squeeze the trigger. Gonna hold that trigger squeezed, fill up the DPF with the cleaning fluid. You'll see the temperature of the DPF start to lower down. Once all of the fluid's in, I'm just gonna remove this. So I do get people ask, can you use the fluid without the gun? Now you can use DPF cleaning fluid without the pressurised gun, but it's not going to work the same because if you pour it in, it's just going to be a, a fluid that's going to sit at the bottom of the DPF. This gun actually makes it expand into a foam. I'll show you. Just like that, basically. Now we can just start fitting everything back the way it went. Okay, we're back in the car, we're gonna start it up. We're gonna hold the revs up at 3000 RPM. We'll get this pressure on a graph. We'll watch the pressure coming down. It's hard to keep the revs in one, one place. So we're now down around 40, 50 millibars. Let that idle down. Now we just got some smoke coming from the exhaust. It's basically a vapor from the fluid that we put in. It's like a steam. Gonna give that about 10 minutes until that dies down. Okay, now what we need to do to reset this 400%, we need to go in and reset the values of the DPF. So we're gonna to go to special functions and then teach in process. I'm gonna reset the particle filter, which is this one. And we'll press OK on that. So these percentages need to be reset by doing this procedure here. And now that's all done. Now we can come back to the fault codes. Sorry, there. And we get all of these cleared down. We've got air now, airflow sensors, because we've had other stuff unplugged. That's it, we've cleared all the fault codes now. Okay, we've got the engine running, engine management light is gone. All the faults are clear. Now before the DPF clean was done, we were restricted to 3000 RPM. You can see now the revs are not restricted. So once the engine has been running for a while, go back, read the fault codes again, make sure that they haven't come back. Okay, so that's it basically. DPF is clean, pressure sensor has changed, everything's all good, and we'll see you on our next video. See you next time.